Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic equation in two ways. Let's start with the first method. For my first method, I would like to get rid of the x squared and use Cardano. So how can I get rid of x squared? And why do I want to get rid of x squared? So when we don't have any x squared term, it's going to be a reduced cubic, which can be solved by using Cardano's method. And we use this method in many different videos. You can also check them out. And I'll tell you what to do. So we're going to replace x with, let's use another variable like y. You can also use z if you want. y minus the coefficient of x squared, which is 1, divided by the highest power, 3. So we're going to replace x with y minus 1 third. And that is basically, in other words, uh, it's the opposite of the coefficient of x squared divided by 3. That's how you do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the replacement. So this gives us y minus 1 third to the third power plus y minus 1 third squared plus 4 equals 0. The constant is not going to change. Now, if you go ahead and expand it and simplify the terms, you can definitely do that. It's fairly easy. I'm going to skip that part and give you the resulting cubic equation. So by simplifying this, we get y cubed minus 1 over 3y plus 110 over 27 equals 0. I know that is such a, a weird uh, fraction, but that's what we get from here. Okay. So now we don't have the y squared term, we don't have the quadratic term anymore, so we can go ahead and use Cardano here. To be able to use Cardano's method, let's go ahead and consider the following, and we used this method before. So consider a plus b quantity cubed, but in a different way. I'm going to write it as a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab times a plus b. This is an identity that's used very often in my videos as well, uh, as well as somewhere else. So let's go ahead and put everything except for the sum of two cubes on the same side. So I can write it as a plus b quantity cubed minus 3ab times a plus b equals a cubed plus b cubed. Some people will also put a cubed plus b cubed on the left hand side. It's going to be negative, so on and so forth, but I just want to leave it on the right hand side. And of course, I want to write my equation the same way, so I can kind of write this as y cubed minus 1 over 3y equals negative 110 over 27. So take a look at this equation and take a look at this equation. We're going to compare those two and make some replacements and then that'll be Cardano. Fairly easy, right? Well, it kind of looks easy when someone else does it. I know that feeling. A lot of times uh, my viewers and students tell me the same thing. Like when you do it, it looks simple. When we start doing it, it looks different. Okay, obviously that's always the case. But here it makes sense to replace y with a plus b or a plus b with y, whatever you want to call it. So here I'm going to replace a plus b with y and this uh, is going to turn into, well, by comparing these equations we notice that this has to be one third in order for this to work and this needs to be negative 110 over 27. So that's the heart of Cardano basically, not the person himself, but you know, the heart of the method is uh, after making these replacements, you get a system of equations which becomes quadratic. So that's the goal. Uh, from here, we can say that 3ab is equal to 1 third, which means ab is equal to 1 ninth, and a cubed plus b cubed is equal to negative 110 over 27. Don't worry, everything is going to simplify and we're going to get a nice answer. That's why we have the second method. Okay, great. Just bear with me. So let's cube both sides here. We get a cubed b cubed equals 1 over 729. By the way, some people said that my handwriting is nice or it looks like their handwriting. Actually, it's not nice at all. But anyways, thank you for the compliment. So this is a system which uh, can be made quadratic. Let's go ahead and do the following. Replace b cubed with negative 110. Uh oh, see? That, is, that can be very messy at times. Negative 110 over 27 minus a cubed. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in here. And that's going to give me the following. a cubed times negative 110 over 27 minus a cubed. And then the product is equal to 1 over 729, which is 9 cubed. 
All right. So now, if you go ahead and distribute this and put everything on the same side, you're going to get something like this. A to the 6 power plus 110 over 27 A cubed plus 1 over 729 equals 0. Awesome. Here, we're going to make the substitution A cubed equals C. I don't want to use B or Y or X. Just want to use C. Okay? And allow me to make the joke. You see what I see? Okay. So, if you do the replacement, you're going to get C squared plus 110 over 27 C plus 1 over 729 equals 0. So, this is a quadratic, and we can easily solve it, but I'll spare you the trouble again. Right, so it doesn't take too long. Uh, these are, uh, you know, details that you can definitely work out. C becomes negative 55 plus minus 12 times the square root of 21 divided by 27. You can multiply both sides by 7 and 20, 729 in the quadratic, and you can get a nicer solution as well. So this is the C value, and suppose, and remember, a cubed is equal to C, but there are two C values. So 2C or not 2C? Yay. I was able to use it. Uh, so I'm going to set one of these equal to a cubed. Suppose a cubed equals negative 55 plus 12 root 21 over 27. By the way, it doesn't matter which one is a cubed and which one is b cubed because y is equal to a plus b, right? So commutative property. So from here, we get the following. a equals negative 5. Again, I'm going to spare you the trouble one more time. Uh, negative 5 plus square root of 21 over 6. And B is just going to be the conjugate of this, of course, because their cubes are conjugates and they are conjugates as well. And this came up in a recent video as well. So these are the A and B values. Cool. And Y is equal to A plus B. So we can now write the value of Y easily. And notice that they have the same denominator. So I can just go ahead and add them. If you add them, you're going to notice something super duper nice. Yes. Uh, some terms are going to cancel out. Yay! This becomes negative 10 over 6, which can be written as negative 5 thirds. Awesome. After all these complications, we get a nice, uh, somewhat nice value for y. But what is the relationship between x and y? x can be written as y minus 1 third, remember? And if you replace y with negative 5 thirds, you get for x, negative 6 thirds, which can be written as negative 2. Awesome. x is equal to negative 2. Yay. Beautiful. But what is that supposed to mean? It just means that uh, x plus 2 is a factor of this cubic. x plus 2 is a factor of the cubic. Well, hmm. you can use long division or whatever method you want, and you're going to get the following. Again, I'm going to spare you the trouble, and you're going to get x plus 2 multiplied by x squared minus x plus 2 equals 0. The other factor, which is quadratic, doesn't have any real solutions. So from here, if you use the quadratic formula, you get x equals negative b plus minus the square root of uh, b squared, which is 1, minus 4 times 2, 8. So that's going to give us a negative 7. And that can be written as plus minus square root of 7i. So the solutions are going to be negative 2. 1 plus square root of 7i over 2, 1 minus square root of 7i over 2. And this doesn't bring us to the end of this video because we're going to use the second method. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method now. And I'm pretty sure you'll appreciate it. That's why we got a nice result. So the second method basically involves factoring. And this is factorable. How do you think I came up with this equation? I started off with the solution and then I kind of worked backwards. So here's how it works. I'm going to break down four and I know some people are going to object, say, hey, how on earth we're going to see this? You'll see this if you do a lot of these problems. I'm going to break down the four into eight and negative four. And that kind of makes sense, right? It does because now it's factorable by grouping. This is sum of two cubes. Yay, awesome x squared minus 2x plus 4, and this is difference of two squares. This is how I came up with the problem. I took two expressions that are factorable, and they have a common factor, and then go from there. You see? That's how easy to make up some problems. And then x plus 2 is a common factor, obviously, and then the rest follows. x squared minus 2x plus x minus x, 4 minus 2 is positive 2, and the results are as before. And this brings us, and if you want me to write, 
before I say, this brings us, <laughs> okay, let me rewrite the roots. Uh, the roots are going to be negative 2 and allow me to use a little bit of economy here. 1 plus minus square root of 7i over 2. These are all the roots of the cubic. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.